Good, good afternoon, everyone. I want to join Dean Seibler and uh, uh, Chair Vecchio in both welcoming you warmly and uh, congratulating you on getting admission into this uh, really competitive program. So I hope uh, you realize that you have really done achieved something already, as the Dean pointed out before. Um, I would like to tell you for the next 10 minutes, or maybe no more than 15 minutes, about the bioengineering department and the bioengineering program that you're entering into. Before I start telling you anything, I want you to just, for the students or prospective students who are coming in, close your eyes and imagine the following. Imagine you're going to, um, you're going to be a part of a team that invents the following machinery. A patient comes to a hospital, goes inside a machine, the machine measures everything about you, and then comes back and gives you all the measurements and does a non-invasive prognostic therapeutics on you. So that's what you can be doing. And imagine another patient who goes through, who has an accident, who comes to the hospital, and you want to, today, when you have an accident, you lose blood. So imagine you want to be searching around for your type A or type B or type O and all these things. Imagine they can take your own blood. In, within a few minutes, you can regenerate your own blood synthetically outside using stem cell engineering, and this is what we do. And this is what you could be a part of. Okay, so this is the, what the future holds for bioengineering. In fact, bioengineering is regarded widely as the hottest field that is emerging. In fact, the National Research Council came up with a report which said there's going to be a 100% increase in the number of jobs in bioengineering in the next few years. And so you are really, I mean, the, the future for bioengineering. Let me give you a bird's eye view of what bioengineering does. And, uh, um, we are, the inter we, are, we are founded in 1960s in La Jolla, California. This is the Department of Engineering. The dean pointed this out earlier. As an engineering department, we are ranked seventh public university in, I mean, in U.S. News and World Report. We are first in the UC system on federal research funding as of 2008. We are regarded as the hottest university for science in Newsweek and in the 2006 Kaplan Newsweek College Guide. So if you're not coming here, you're going to be not cool, but you're going to be cold. <laughs> okay, so in, in 19, let me give you a brief milestone to the bioengineering program. In 1966, we formed the bioengineering program was initiated here. So this is a joint program with what used to be at the time, the Aerospace Mechanical and Electrical Sciences Department, Engineering Sciences Department, and the School of Medicine in 1975. We've obtained the first NIH training grant, which allowed uh, taking a lot of graduate students and graduating them. And then we had a whole history, modern history of things. In 1991, we formed the Institute for Biomedical Engineering. In 1993, the Whitaker Foundation gave us a development award for $5 million. In 1993, the Industrial Liaison Program was formed. In 1994, the Department of Bioengineering was formally established, just like the Department of Nanoengineering. If you turn the clock back to 19. Uh, 94, we had the Department of Engineering that is officially established. The Powell Foundation gave us a gift of $8 million, and the Whitaker Foundation decided we are the leaders in bioengineering and gave us a leadership award of $18 million, and the 99 Whitaker Institute for Biomedical Engineering was formed. In 2001, we decided to we got, obtain funding from the Juan Liebig Foundation, which is a center for entrepreneurism, and they gave us $10 million. In 2002, the Powell Folk Bioengineering Hall was built, which you're all going to visit. It's a modern state-of-the-art building facility. In fact, we are the envy of most bioengineering departments. All the chairs who come and visit me say that, oh, we would really like to have a department building just like yours. Um, in 2002, the Powell Folk Bioengineering Building was formally occupied. In 2008, as uh, Dean Seibler pointed out, we started the Institute of Engineering in Medicine. The Dean and the Vice Chancellor for Health Sciences is fond of saying that the future of medicine is in bioengineering. Um, in 2010, and even before, we have been ranked as number one in the National Research Council, and that's just by the way. <laughs> so we have 24 core faculty, we have 17 affiliate faculty, we have five adjunct faculty, we are, in fact, getting two more faculty this year. And so we are uh, considered as a robust set of, of, I mean, strength in faculty. We have 14 research and project scientists and 48 postdoctoral fellows in the program. We have 125 PhD students and 28 master's students and 13 MEng Masters of Engineering students. And we have, most importantly, 
705 undergraduate students across four majors. And I hope uh, some of you will maintain that strength by coming here to UCSD, or most of you. This is the rough bird's eye view of all the cast of characters in the bioengineering department. And uh, I just, I don't want to go through all the names. These are the dates in, at which they joined. If you look at 1999, somewhere in the middle, I was roughly, I think, the 10th faculty member who joined. And we have substantially grown since then to the size of 24 or 26. And I want to point out most of them, almost everyone here in this list you're seeing is highly distinguished, internationally recognized. As Dean Seibler pointed out, I mean, two of our full-time faculty members are members of all three academies, Academy of Science, Engineering, and Institute of Medicine, and they're all pioneers in, a, in their own area. When I visit other departments to advise them or help them, the standard opinion is we want to be like bio, UCSD bioengineering. This is a standard statement I hear. This is, I'm not trying to boast. I'm not trying to be, I mean, uh, self, uh, I mean, uh, uh, praising, but I'm going to tell you this is exactly what we hear. Our mission is the following. We want to improve health and quality of life by applying engineering principles to scientific discovery and technology innovation. And to train our most important thing, in fact, we have taken it as uh, our mandate to train future leaders in bioengineering through inspiring education and dedicated mentorship. And I want you to take this extremely seriously. I believe, and my faculty believe, that the students are the ambassadors, not only for the discipline of bioengineering, but also for UCSD bioengineering. So we would like you to hold the beacons and be the pioneers in bioengineering for the next decade and decades to come. So we believe in edu strong and robust education. Our vision for integrative bioengineering is we believe it integrates biology, medicine, and engineering. Most of the places you go to will tell you, oh, you need to be an expert in engineering, you need to be an expert in medicine, or you need to be an expert in biology. We expect you to be experts in everything. We expect you to be polymaths. This comes at a price, which means you cannot be, if you're only interested in partying in Southern California, this is the wrong place for you. But, but nevertheless, you have enough time to do fun things. So we, are, we want to take complex biomedical data and integrate them into systemic models. In fact, we have a large number of projects that deal with, uh, deal, that go towards individualized medicine, which will help you build the next generation framework for medicine and therapeutics. We look at biological properties across all physical scales. Nanoengineering looks largely at nanoscales. Bioengineering has to be multi-scale, so we go from from femto, eto, to nano, to, I mean, micro, to macro, to giga scales, whatever scales you can think of. When we have uh, space exploration, we will start thinking about life outside Earth in higher scales as well. And so we, uh, we uh, integrate research and education with technology transfer in healthcare. In fact, uh, several, of fac several faculty members in the UCSD bioengineering department have uh, innovated, started companies. I should tell you, absolutely phenomenal success story. One of our faculty members who is joined with nanoengineering, he devised his students, designed and devised an ability to take very, very tiny samples of fluid from your body and be able to detect a whole slew of things. In fact, they now have a large company that's been started, started by these students and uh, you can imagine the future of this company. It's going to be very bright. This is our uh, bioengineering hall. This is where we are going to be taking you after this to go through a tour as well as to answer your questions. We have about roughly 104,000 square feet of space. We have two teaching laboratories. We have a multimedia laboratories, a laboratory. We have an absolutely phenomenally good, interesting, exciting auditorium. We have a graduate student lounge with a ping pong table and a billiards table and what have you. And we have 17 research laboratories, two core research facilities, and a strong industrial internship program. Um, we are, I should tell you, we are accredited to our programs, BS in bioengineering, BS bioengineering biotechnology are accredited programs. And we have a small interdisciplinary program across campus on BS in bioinformatics. And we are on the verge of initiating a new program called biosystems engineering, which will come into play hopefully next year. Uh, we have a five-year integrative BSMS degree. A number of our students would like to get a BSMS degree, which actually places them in extremely advantageous positions to go into industry to do very exciting things. We have a Master of Science program in bioengineering, Master of Engineering program in bioengineering. We have an MSMD program. 
where you can be all, not only a master of engineering, but also a physician, clinician, and we have a PhD in bioengineering, we have a PhD in bioinformatics, which is, uh, we, are, we participate in it heavily. In fact, I founded that program in, 2000, in the year 2000, and then we have an MD, we participate actively in MD-PhD, which is also known as the MSTP program. Um, I don't want to go through this list at all. You're going to get this in your list. I don't expect you to memorize. There's no quiz after this. However, I want you to know the following, that from this smorgasbord of courses, what you learn immediately is that we take education very seriously. We take interdisciplinary training between biology, medicine, and engineering very seriously. And we, this is, in fact, for the bioengineering degree, these are our requirements. You'll get a strong foundation in math and physical sciences. You'll get a strong foundation across board in the foundations of engineering and the applications of engineering to living systems. This is really what defines bioengineering. Similarly, for the biotechnology program, we train our students to be very competent and be able to go into industry, to be able to go into next generation medicine, and we have training appropriate for biotechnology, I mean, uh, advancement. It's a similar program. I don't want to go into the details of this in bioinformatics program. We bring a strong dose of computational sciences and computer sciences. You will get a copy of this in your mail, so don't worry about it. The slide that comes next is your Bible. This is your Bible because uh, you want to graduate in four years. If you want to graduate in four years, we, we are engineers. So therefore, we give you a flow chart on how you can do it, right? We want to give you a flow chart on how you can appropriately take the prerequisite courses that will help you go into a given program. So we have for each major, we have a flow chart. If you're a student, we have advising for you. We tell you the flow chart is your Bible for the next four years. Okay, this flowchart guides you as to what courses you need to take when so that you won't be lagging behind, so that you will have the maximum benefit of, uh, taking, of, of doing your curricular advancement. This, this is the flowchart for biotechnology major. This is the flowchart for bioengineering major. Our student affairs staff will give you these flowcharts and then follow it religiously and then come and talk to us and, help, and get our help in terms of deciding how you can maximally take benefit of this flowchart. Especially, I believe, many of you come with advanced placement courses, so we will help you navigate this flowchart in absolutely wonderful ways. In fact, I, I, I have a half a mind to, I mean, make it dynamic, make it visually dynamic, so a student can kind of see himself or herself navigating this flowchart. Okay, this is... Uh, the follow the curriculum in the catalog. This is just a small version of that a window into that. Advising, we have uh, extremely good advisors in the bioengineering program. Our student affairs are really, I mean, seasoned people. They have, I mean, they're absolutely phenomenally good. I mean, if I was a student, I would not want anyone better than them. So they're really so good. And uh, they, they do all the programs, scheduling, petitions, advisory meetings. Our faculty, you can this, uh, just, uh, as it was pointed out earlier uh, by Ken and uh, by Dr. Vecchio, you can walk into any office, any faculty member's office, talk to them. This is one of the unique things about, I've been in three universities, and no other university you have this option. Here you can just walk into a faculty professor's room. I can even walk into Dean Seibler's office and speak with him. <laughs> so, and the biomedical engineering, we have a, our faculty advise you on career issues. We have a biomedical engineering society. We have uh, panel discussions of this biomedical engineering. This is done by students. In fact, we advise them, but the students organize this extremely well. In fact, just last week, we had a biomedical engineering society organized a bioengineering quiz bowl. I was a quiz master. It was spectacular. You know, we had a great, students had a great time. It was like a live jeopardy, except in engineering. <laughs> we had a career services office that is pre-med. I mean, advises you on pre-med, veterinary school, law, and business, and what you can go into. We have uh, co colleges. You heard about the college system from Dean Seibler. So the college system also has advising, and they tell you on what are your best options to get a well-rounded education. Our undergraduate studies committee, the faculty, is chaired by Dr. David Goff. It has got Professor Schmidt Schoenbein, Dr. Melissa Miku, Professor Engler, Professor Zhang, and Professor Kovenbergs. There are six members, and I believe in education as being the most important thing. So we have six faculty members or members of the Undergraduate Affairs Committee. We constantly revise our curriculum. We constantly talk with students in figuring out how we can deliver the best curriculum and what content should be there in the best curriculum. 
This is your, uh, these people are going to be your absolute, uh, I mean, guides. In fact, Marjean White, who's outside, and Kelly Thorpe, who is an undergraduate uh, uh, advice, student advisor. They are, uh, I mean, on top of everything. In fact, if I have a question, I call them first because they know the answers to everything. And so I hope that I'll stop in just one more slide. Our goal, the BMES is a biomedical engineering society. In fact, it is an inst institution across the country. It embraces, it, it brings in students from across different institutions. Our goal of the BMES is to provide students with guidance, services, events, which will enhance both academic and professional development. And we want to provide, I mean, foster social interactions. We have pizza days, and uh, I mean, when you grow old enough, you can even have beer. And, <laughs> and, and we have a lot of fun activities in the bioengineering department. So with that, I will stop. I don't want to go into these are facilities, instructional and computing facilities, and we have a great laboratory, biotechnology laboratory. We have great bioengineering laboratory. You will get into it. And as the dean pointed out, the most exciting thing you can do is to talk to professors about joining the research labs and doing something really phenomenal and exciting. I have to tell you, half of our students I mean, do spectacular projects, research projects by the time they graduate. And some of them publish papers, including papers in leading journals like Nature and Cell and Science and so forth. So this is really one of the hallmarks of UCSD bioengineering. I mean, that's probably one reason why we are ranked number one. Anyway, so I will stop here at this point. I don't want to go into thematic areas. We have a lot of areas we talked about. I think Ken will talk about it later on in his department. And we have uh, brochures for you. I don't want to take more time. What I would do is I would walk with you guys to the bioengineering building. I'm sure you have a lot of questions. I want to end by telling you that all of you have multiple options. You are phenomenal students. But if you don't come to UCSD, you are committing a big mistake. <laughs> Thank you.